we start with the, the content of our experience. Let's take our, our thoughts. Thoughts, by definition, are always agitated. That, that, that is, they're always moving. Um, emotions, uh, and by emotions, I refer to a, a afflictive emotions, uh, sorrow, loneliness, shame, fear, and, and, and so on. So uh, our, our feelings have a, have a, a sorrowful um, aspect to them. So if we ask ourselves the question, um, what is it that is aware of our thoughts? And what, what is it that allows our thoughts to be known? What is it that illuminates them? Uh, what is it that knows them? That, that, that's what we essentially are, the, the presence of awareness. And the presence for, of awareness is, is them. So here we're, we're, we're separating our experience in, into a subject and an object. But instead of considering the subject of our experience to be the body-mind, which is what we normally do, we're, we're saying, no, the, the body-mind is something I'm a, aware of. I am the, the light of awareness, the, the lighthouse. I'm the light of awareness that, that knows or is aware of that my thoughts, in, in, indeed the entirety of my experience. And the awareness that illuminates or knows our thoughts doesn't share their agitation. It just observes them. Uh, the sun that, that illuminates the earth, it doesn't participate in the, in, in, in the whatever is taking place. It just illuminates it. It, it doesn't share the qualities of, of the, the content, the activities of the earth. And likewise, the presence of awareness, the, the, the presence of awareness that is now listening to our conversation or knowing our thoughts is just silently witnessing those thoughts. It, it doesn't need to be made peaceful through effort or practice or, or discipline. It, it is already such. It is just this inherently peaceful, silent, witnessing, knowing presence. Um, and the same with our feelings. The, the sorrowful nature of our feelings are it is known or lit up by awareness. And they also appear within the space of awareness. So awareness has both this spacious quality and this um, illuminating or knowing quality. It's why in the Buddhist tradition it's sometimes referred to as luminous emptiness. It is empty like space, not a physical space, but it's an aware space, a, a luminous space that, that both contains all our experience and knows all our experience. But the, this, this aware space in which our mm, sorrow and loneliness and shame and fear exists doesn't itself um, share those qualities. Just like the space in this room, if we were, if we were dancing in this room now or fighting in this room now, that the, the space would not be modified by it. The space would remain as it essentially is, uh, at peace, unaffected. And awareness is like that. Just that I'm not talking about an enlightened awareness. I'm not talking about awareness how it might be if we meditate for 30 years. I'm talking about the awareness with which everybody, the, 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 everybody, all 8 billion of us, the awareness with which all 8 billion of us now know our experience is already inherently peaceful and, and without any, any lack, it lacks nothing. And, and therefore, we, we say its nature is happiness. By happiness, I don't mean an, an emotion of happiness that comes and goes. It's just this complete absence of lack, this complete ease, this, this fullness, this sufficiency, this plenitude. So, the, in, in that, so it's in relation to the content of our experience, in relation to our agitated thoughts, that we say the nature of awareness is peaceful. It's in relation to our sorrowful feelings that we say the nature of awareness is happiness. And w one other quality important to, to mention that from the point of view of the finite mind, reality is broken up into separate objects and selves. So that finite mind has a, has a paradigm of separation. Whereas for, for awareness, it's like the space in this room. The space in this room, once it knows itself, how it really knows nothing of separate, it doesn't feel separate from the space outside the room, or, or indeed the space in your kitchen. It, it's, it's from the point of view of the space, there's one space. So likewise, from the point of view of awareness or aware being, there's, there's, just, there's just itself. With, with the, it, it's infinite, without borders and with all, without divisions. So 
from its experience of itself, it, it, there are no, there's no separation, there's no otherness in it. And this absence of otherness is the experience that we refer to as, as love. That's why love is sometimes said to be the, the nature of reality. So peace, joy, love, these are the, these are the qualities of awareness. But I'd like to add one thing to, to that, that strictly speaking, we shouldn't assign any qualities to awareness or name those qualities because all the qualities and the names uh, we give them are really qualities that we give to our experience, to our objective experience. It's legitimate to say that the nature of awareness is peaceful in contrast with our agitated thoughts. It's legitimate to say that the nature of awareness is joy in contrast with or with reference to our emotions. It's legitimate to say that the nature of awareness is, is love with reference to the separation that we normally feel. So these are legitimate concessions that we make. But what, but what we're doing is we're, we're still um, using the mind. In, in these cases, the mind is trying to name the qualities of awareness within its own frame of reference. However, the mind cannot know reality, it cannot know awareness how it is, because as we saw earlier, everything the mind knows is refracted through its limitations. Therefore, the mind cannot know the nature of awareness. Only awareness is aware. So only awareness can know about itself or, or indeed anything else. So if we really want to know the nature of awareness, we must, as it were, ask awareness, what is your experience of yourself? That can be the only true knowledge of awareness. So if we were to do that, if we were to say, I'm caricaturing awareness now, if we were to say to awareness, what is your intrinsic awareness of yourself? What is your knowledge of yourself prior to the arising of experience? So thoughts and feelings and objects haven't arisen yet. Imagine they haven't arisen yet. It's just empty space. There are no buildings in the universe. There are no, it's just empty. If we say to awareness, what is your experience of yourself prior to, in other words, don't refer to experience. What is your experience of yourself? Awareness would never say, I am peaceful, because it hasn't yet known agitation. It would never say my nature is happiness because it hasn't yet known, sorry. It would never say my nature is love because it hasn't yet known separation. What would awareness say if we asked it? What, are, what is your experience of yourself? Well, it would remain silent, but imagine we were to to press it, because they come on, tell us something true about yourself. The only thing it would say is, I am. That is a true statement about itself. That's the statement that it would make about itself. If we ask the mind to tell us something about awareness, the mind says, it is peaceful. It is loving. It, so that's the mind viewing awareness as, as an object. But in awareness's experience of itself, there are no other finite minds from whose point of view it, it may be known. There's just itself and in, in its own knowledge, knowledge of itself. And that must be the, the, the true knowledge of awareness. So that, that's why it's said really that, that the highest teaching is, is silence. And if we, if we have to say something about truth, that, that would be awareness's knowledge of itself would be the highest truth. And awareness's knowledge of itself is just the expression. If it were to express that knowledge, it would be I am. And that's why I am is said to be the absolute truth. All other truth, even the, the knowledge, awareness is inherently peaceful. It is, it's relatively true. It's true relative to the finite mind's experience. But if we want a, a truth that is not subject to the limitations of a finite mind, then all we can say is I am. The I, the I am is the absolute truth and going back to our conversation about the different religions and traditions that 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 they would all agree they would have to agree on, on that, that 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 the nature of reality prior to the arising of experience if that reality were to say something about itself it would just say i am which is why in the old testament it, god's name is said to be i am that that is the the, the highest expression of the of the ultimate truth. 